In the last video, I talked about how China values a one world government and, and they have this, um, th this paradigm of doing a hyena style attack and they plan for it. And it's a known thing in their culture because they genuinely believe that they're entitled and that the world will only be a fair, good, peaceful place. If China receives everything that it's entitled to, this is core didactically, directly, not metaphorically, not subconsciously, directly written, published, talked about teaching. Now they're a little bit shy about it and they try to hide it because it's not popular with the West, but they genuinely talk and teach this. This is not, this is not unknown. This is not secretive. This is not subconscious. It is direct and plain. Believe it or not, this is, we're talking not one flew over the cuckoo's nest, but half a dozen. This is really, we're, we're talking, we're talking mad scientists. We're talking criminally insane. We're talking what in, are you, what? We're talking self-rationalized megalomania on an institutional scale. This is like, I mean, really like, yeah, I've, I sat with the, the pastor over in a Hong Kong, uh, an American who was in Hong Kong pastoring in, a, in an English church. And I told him the hyena style attack that I had received from Matt Chun at Living Water in Tainan. I'm saying his name now. I've, he's had seven years to clean it up. Affiliated with IHOP KC on some level, Jeshu Run Shao, I have the emails. Also affiliated Dave Bealby of the Vineyard. Very sad. But I had described to him, I, I'm, I'm saying this now, this is a thing. There's correspondence with IHOP KC. Very sad. I described to him in Hong Kong, this American who had been dealing in Hong Kong, the, the hyena style attack that living water did with me. And he didn't believe that what I was saying was true. He's like, no one would do that. I'm like, so I didn't see what I saw. I don't have the email that I read. I, I, I wasn't there in the front of the coffee shop with Matt Chun holding my elbow saying, I know about you Americans. I know how to deal with you. I have powerful friends in government. I can have you thrown out of the country. He didn't say that. Now he backed off and he said, but, but we don't want to go there. Matt, Matt did because Matt does have a conscience, but you know, look, now that I've talked about Matt, I have to say his, his younger son, Nathaniel has always been kind and friendly to me. Very, I believe that they can be good people, but they break little tiny rules. And, and the problem is that they won't drop their culture. I would love to see friendship established. I can't, it can't be reconciliation because there's nothing to reconcile return to. I would love to see friendship established between myself and this normatively rogue congregation. But this is the problem of Christianity in Asia. They don't leave their hyena style attack culture. And when you tell Americans about it, even an American pastor in Hong Kong, they don't believe that it's really happening because no one would do that, right? Yes, they do. And every once in a while, you'll get a missionary professor in America who will say, yes, it actually does happen and it really is bad, but it's never going to change. They're not going to change. They're not going to obey the Bible that we teach and you're wrong to try to tell them to. And it's like, okay, wait a minute. I think now we're getting into, I not an expert, but I'm trying to remember what I've heard about stuff. That sounds to me, and the guy, look, the, the culture's wrong. They're wrong. They teach Bible, but they don't obey this part of the Bible and it's wrong and bad, but it's never going to change. And you've got to accept that. And if you try to change it, you're bad. That sounds to me like abused wife syndrome. That sounds to me like the family, like the parents who have surrendered to the crazy child. Like 
that that sounds to me like the victim who's fallen in love with uh, the, the the perpetrator, like like the the captive, the kidnapped person who fell in love with the kidnapper. That's what that sounds like to me. Again, I, I really think that we need to have influence. We need to have some say from the Christian psychologists when we're talking about Christian issues when it comes to this Asian shame culture. People don't believe it, and it really is true, and it really does happen. And it's like, ah, really? And there's no help. I wonder why, as, as I explained this to IHOP KC, why they wouldn't get on board. I'm talking Jeshuan Shao, John O'Hall, and... Um, uh, Mark Hendrickson. I've had correspondence with all of them. They wouldn't do anything. And I think, I, I don't think it's because they're bad people. I think it's because they genuinely don't believe it. Because it's unbelievable. Okay, so I'm, I'm, I'm trying to establish that things are unbelievable. I, listen, I want the best for this ministry. I, I really want the best. But do they want the best for themselves? They've had seven years to deal with this. Um... And, and and they they haven't. So I I look forward to a welcome change. Enough about that specifically. But the things that happen in Asia in this culture are unbelievable. They're unbelievable. So now I'm going to explain to you how this relates to design, to product design. I'm holding here in my hand a little portable hard drive. Now, look at this. It says on the bottom, I'm going to hide barcodes. It says ASUS. You can see it there, kind of. There, ASUS. It's from ASUS. It's made by ASUS. All right, ASUS. I've got an ASUS phone right here. Uh, oh, here it is. Look at the bottom of this ASUS phone. First, look at the bottom of the hard drive. See how it's curved on the bottom? Okay, curved on the bottom. All right. Look at the bottom of this Asus phone. See how it's curved on the bottom? All right, curved on the bottom. You know, let's look, HTC, another company. Let's look at this, HTC. Here we go, ready? Curved on the bottom. Both ways, curved on the bottom. That's an HTC One I just showed you. I'm going to get out my HTC Desire V. HTC Desire V. See, curved on the bottom. See, that's that's older phone. HTC Desire V, curved on the bottom. Hold it in your hand. All right, I'm going to get out my HTC 10. HTC One, HTC 10. Curved on the bottom. Not quite as much. If you look at, there's a little bit of chiseling there, kind of a little chisel design, but it's still curved on the bottom. Look at that. Curved on the bottom. Okay. Let's look at Sony. This is Sony Xperia, flat on the bottom. Flat on the bottom. Now, the original iPhones were curved on the bottom. Remember? Just like all those things I just showed you. This is the iPhone 4. Steve Jobs iPhone. That is not curved on the bottom. Curved on the sides, not curved on the bottom. In fact, it was so popular with the iPhone 5 that they still have a design like that that's still available because people want it. Flat on the bottom. What's going on with this? Well, let me show you a little USB stick. In fact, this is a USB stick that's a lot like... This is like the one that I wanted to give to America's government rather than going on YouTube about all these things. I want to be polite about it. But they wouldn't take it. See that? This is made in Taiwan. It's a USB stick. Look at that. It's curved on the bottom. The, the shape of it. See the curve? It's the same shape as the other stuff. Here, let's look, at the, let's look at the HTC. See the little curve on the HTC? Very similar curve. Let's go back to the ASUS. Look at that little curve on the side of the, of the ASUS hard, hard disk. See the, see the little curve on the bottom? Why does a hard disk have a handheld phone style curve on the bottom. Do you sit there and hold your external hard drive in your hand while you're using it? Why is it there? Why is it that a Taiwanese 
Christian church would act this way. Why? They don't, they, they, they say they're Christian, they talk about Jesus, they actually have some level of repentance and teaching, but they, they, they still, you know, they, they don't talk to people one-on-one -on -one about their problems. They still do the old Chinese culture hyena style attack. Why? This is a Sony USB from several years ago. You might recognize it. It's not curved on the bottom. It's flat. This is a USB 3 before the 3.1. It's a USB 3. It, it, it was buggy. Like this USB drive has a problem because the USB 3 had bugs. See it? Flat on the bottom. Just like the Sony, the Xperia is flat on the bottom. This is an older Xperia. Um, why did I show you all these? That curvy thing on the bottom is the trend in Taiwan design. Can you see that? Can you see that much? HTC is a Taiwanese company. So is Asus, if you didn't know. You know, your Asus phone. You know, Asus phone. All right. Taiwan, the uh, HTC and Asus had their beginnings as manufacturing supply factories. The American company would do the design. They might do research and development. HTC recently sold their research and development department because it was one of the few profitable departments left. I, it just doesn't make sense. HTC owned Beats Audio and they had a profitable research and development department. They sold both of those. Oh, great. I've got uh, the fireworks outside because of, of Chinese pagan holidays and stuff. It's one reason that I am no longer enamored by fireworks in 4th of July in America. I just, I see that constantly here. It's just, it's overload. I, I'm not fascinated by it. It's like, ooh, fireworks. It's like, ugh, fireworks. You know, like I've 10 years of this. Okay. Taiwan, Taiwan doesn't have an ultra posh consumer market. In America, we've had great, excellent products. We've had a hundred years of making it better and better. And we're the kings and queens and princes and princesses, and we're the royalty, and we want everything to be ultra uber nice. Super. I want it nice. I want everything. I want nice stuff. Everything nice. I want it nicer. Let's do ergonomics. Let's make everything ergonomically correct. I want everything smooth and round. I want every. You know, we've been doing this, and you do that for a hundred years at least more, maybe 150. Like you do that for a long time, you start inventing stuff. Well, I, I don't, I don't want to get distracted because I could dedicate an entire video to this. But in a tropical island, people do not leave hot water heaters on all the time. In Hong Kong, they don't. Vietnam, they don't. Taiwan, they don't. You take a shower, you turn the hot water heater on before that. You want hot water for cooking or something, go to the boiler because everyone's got hot water boilers. And then all the water is just normal. It's a tropical island. We don't need constant instant hot water. We just don't. Um, even in Malaysia, they had an instant hot water heater only. But the hot water tank concept, that's really not a normal thing in most of Taiwan and, and most of the tropical Asia. In Hong Kong, Vietnam, I want to think Malaysia, but I'm not sure. I don't have enough experience in Malaysia. When you go to take your shower, there's a little heavy switch. It's a normal light switch. It's a rocker. They, they don't do the stick out light switch thing. They, they, it's a rock, always a rocker. You, you walk past it, you're not going to snag it. It's a, it's a small cramped space always. So, you know, you don't want to be snagging that light switch thing sticking out. In our great big American houses where you have to like fly across the room to reach the light switch. Here, everything's all cramped. So the light switches are almost always rockers. There's an extra heavy rocker. It's got like a hard spring. You've really got to push on the thing to make the switch flip both ways. It's got a, 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 an indicator light, a big red light that comes on when it's on. And that's your hot water heater. 10 minutes before your shower, just outside the bathroom, you turn that switch on in Hong Kong and in Vietnam and the light comes on. At the hostel, you're supposed to turn it off when you leave or they get mad and yell at you. They don't take your money. They just yell at you. 
and, and everybody was expected to do it because that's just what they do over there. So the foreigners traveling at the hostels kind of get used to it. Or they'll tell each other, oh, yeah, yeah, water, you know, that thing, yeah. All right. In Taiwan, they don't have that switch. In Taiwan, they expect you to go to the breaker box and open up the breaker, the circuit breaker box and flip the black circuit breaker switch two times every day. I've had two landlords explain this to me in big, large, fat buildings. The current place I live, the hot water heater is in the shower chamber and I reach up and flip the switch on the hot water heater every time I use it. They do not have the safe, normal, everyday use switch outside of the bathroom. I, I know, I've, I've already established, like, this kind of crazy stuff actually happens. Like, it actually, I believe me, it actually happens. But Taiwan is a culture where they don't see a problem with going to the circuit breaker box every day and flipping that thing, wearing that switch out back and forth. They never see the value, like Hong Kong and Vietnam do, of putting a regular everyday use switch to turn your hot water heater on and off. Meant for normal use, safe, by the door, a light to indicate it's on. When the hot water heater's on, there's not a light that you walk by telling you. It's just you got to know it in Taiwan. How in the world is a culture like that ever going to invent a well-designed, ergonomically correct product? How are they ever going to do that? They're not. HTC wants to become a big, famous brand. That's what they were doing with the HTC One, with the HTC 10. That's what they were doing with those. They want to be the name brand. They want to be like Apple. They don't care how much money they make. They could make more money than Apple manufacturing hardware, but they don't want to do that. They want to be the big, famous, important brand. And this is like a disease that's all over companies and factories in Taiwan. They see all these Americans designing these super nice products and they want to be like that, but they don't get why. They, they, oh, it looks cool. It's round. So even though the iPhone is already flat on the bottom with the iPhone 4 in 2000, what, 10 was it? Even though Sony's Xperia from years ago, one of the first waterproof phones ever, was already flat on the bottom. Five, six, seven years later, HTC 10, still round on the bottom. Asus putting iPhone 1, 2, 3 round on the bottom on the bottom of a portable hard drive. The top is flat. It's shaped like an iPhone. It holds in your hand. Portable hard drives aren't for holding in your hand. Why USB sticks round on the bottom like a phone. They don't get the purpose of round on the bottom. One, it was a cute idea for the hand, but it didn't apply. It didn't work. So the U.S. stopped it. They still like it because it looks cool. I was just talking with a friend who's doing product design here, and he asked, he said, what should I do? He says, I'm supposed to design an ergonomically correct flashlight. What should I do? And I, I gave him this talk just today. This is a reverse engineering type of culture. They get the designs from the West and then they make the stuff over here. They copy China's five new aircraft carriers. They're, they're kind of starting to come out now, the nuclear powered ones. Those are reverse engineered from the diesel powered aircraft carrier that China bought from Russia that was made in, in uh, the Ukraine during, during the Cold War era. 
It's a Soviet-made, really, really old diesel-powered aircraft carrier. It's called the Liaoning. There's a China's been charging around the Pacific with this diesel-powered aircraft carrier. And the aircraft carriers they're making were not invented in China. They were reverse engineered from a 1980s Soviet aircraft carrier. They, they don't get designing stuff that's really useful for high-end consumers. They don't get that. They're still wanting you to go to the breaker box to turn the hot water heater on. Not even Vietnam and Hong Kong do that. The Taiwanese have this problem with the Sunday morning thing that I described because they've tried to reverse engineer copy Christianity rather than get the core concept. And where all this lands on the last two Taiwan special episodes I was talking about, is this all fits with the idea that all ideas and money must flow one way into China. Taiwan has the same culture bag. Now, the younger generation in Taiwan, and especially the, 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 you know, the, even the Gen X culture a little bit in Hong Kong, are walking away from this. You got the people in America, you know, the abused wife syndrome, you know, missionary teachers in America, it's bad, it's wrong, it should change, but it won't, and you're wrong to try. Those people are now preaching against what the non-Christians in Taiwan want. The, not, the younger non-Christians in Taiwan and Hong Kong want fairness and good biblical values where these things are concerned. And it's the missionary professors in America teaching against it that they should disobey the Bible because Asia is not going to change. That's the other dilemma we're running into. This is another reason I don't really have much use for established church. They, don't, they really blatantly don't follow the Bible. They recommend this is, they're breaking the Bible's teaching and they need to continue because we've learned over the years that they won't change. It's like, you're kidding me. Y yeah, this wild loopy stuff really happens. I try to tell people. And where it all comes back with what I was saying about the one-way street, money, all, money rolls downhill. Or no, what do they say? Crud rolls downhill, money rolls uphill. <laughs> they want all they want all floors, like, like, like a garage with a drain. They want all, fl all floor surface rebels slowly rolling downhill one way into China with money and intellectual property. Why? They don't know how to invent anything. Not, not, they've got ancient inventions still around. But they don't invent stuff for high-end consumer market economies. They need our intellectual property to make that work. The one-way street of ideas, it's not just money that has to flow in, it's inventions that have to flow in. You invented those ideas in America, they're wrong in America, they have to belong to China. You invent it, but they are entitled to the results from it. They believe it and teach it. And that's part of the Christian teaching. You and your American interpretation of the Bible. What? America was natives. P Pilgrims took the Bible and the Bible affected Western culture. Western culture was just as filled with shame and wanting to save face and not knowing how to forgive people and hyena style attacks as China still is. Until the Bible came into Europe and the West and made it what it was. The difference is not West East. The difference is Bible non-Bible. But in the East, they'll say, oh, that's just your American interpretation. How do you know it's American? Have you been to Europe and America to know that it's American, not European? You know, they, they, they just, they're leaping to their conclusions, coming up with some quick argument because they believe that your American ideals, your American ways, your methods, your money, your intellectual property, it doesn't belong in America. It should be made in America and then Chinese culture, whether Taiwan or China, is entitled to it. And until that happens, until they get what they're entitled to, until it's realized, it will never be what it should be. They don't believe that Christianity is what it should be until the Americans do what the Chinese just figured out in the last hundred years should be done. The, the Watchman Nee, Witness Lee movement. They really believe that their Chinese version, less than a hundred year old Chinese version, 
Now, now this is not from Watchman Nee. This is from the people following in the movement today. They really believe that they're going to go take over the world with their little uh, local church uh, method things that they, it's a denomination, but they say it's not, but it, it's a de facto denomination. They're going to go populate the whole world with their little way of doing local church. And they're going to wipe away, wash away, put out of business, close, cancel, sell off all the Western church Christian methods because their way is correct because they're Chinese. It's everywhere. It's in business. It's in science and manufacturing. They deeply believe in this one way road rolling into stuff. Now, do I hate them? No, I live here for several years. America also has problems. I'm not saying we should hate them, throw them under the bus, or despise them. But we've got to understand the reality of what's going on. We've got to understand reality of what's going on. These are our friends in Asia. They could be. But we've got to know, we've got to accept the reality of this. So I say this without criticism or with hatred, just, just in terms of reality. Cheerio.